Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Art and Outdoor Life here with John. I hope that you're having a great day, a good morning, great evening, wherever you are. And I hope that you enjoy this video. Thank you for viewing. All right, so let's see what we can do here. A little bit of an orange red. Uh, maybe kind of a, a sunset or an early sunrise. One of those crazy, beautiful skies that you see in the morning. Sometimes uh, you get pinks, you get reds, you get oranges. Uh, right when the sun is coming up and sometimes when the sun is going down. Okay. Um, and with this, what we're going to do is basically uh, create a valley of some sort, a meadow, and just have fun doing it. A little bit a brighter red there just to kind of blend in with the orange and the yellow yeah and that looks that looks pretty good I like that hmm okay um and doing these kind of paintings you know, you're looking for your horizon. Now, your horizon, some people say, uh, okay, two-thirds of the paper up or two-thirds of the paper uh, from below the top of the paper, uh, depending on where you want your horizon to be, your horizon line. And... So, right now I have the horizon line two-thirds up. And that means that the foreground is going to be much larger. And so you'll have to kind of work with the foreground more than the sky, right? And basically... Uh, yeah, just put some blue in there. You could put some green in there. Um, you couldn't even put a little bit of brown in there. Um, you know, to give it um, like a tree line off to the sides. And I'm just fooling around here. I'm really, uh, you know, like I do in all my paintings, I make it up. I have it in my mind when I sit down, and I'm not sure where it's going to go. And that's the exciting thing. And, you know, and like I always say, uh, not setting the bar very high allows me to be less tense. I'm not so tense about it. In other words, um, okay... Because I don't know what exactly I'm going to paint. I have it in my mind, but I, I'm i not expecting anything great. So, I knew I wanted in this valley or a meadow um, to have patches of green. Shades of green pasture. And I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, but at the very, the forefront here, at the bottom, you know, the bigger it is, uh, it kind of makes, creates the distance in the background, right? So I just put some shapes up and just some odd colors there. I encourage you to uh, choose whatever kind of colors you want 
you know, something a little bit darker up front. Or it could be, a, you know, back and forth, a little dark, a little bit of a light color. But the bigger it is up front, uh, makes makes the the painting look uh, it gives it distance the smaller in the back uh, then you know that's the distance right that's why I'm using these little bitty brushes here and I'm thinking okay maybe uh, some structure Maybe a house or something back there. I'm not worried about detail. This is not about detail. Okay, and then, okay, well, you know, some umber color, you know, umber is brown. Uh, some, you know, with, mixing it with the yellow ochre there kind of gives it almost a reddish tint to it. And I'm just pat drying it, just just kind of lifting up a little bit of the water, and with that, because it's so wet, I'm actually lifting up some of the pigment. Now, you know, these are really fun to do. These are great to do. Um, you know, just sitting around the house, just sitting around, and um, you know. You don't know what to paint. You're not sure what to paint. Use your imagination. Okay, well, I don't know because then I start overthinking, right? Okay, well, I'm overthinking because now I'm thinking about, um, I'm showing up to paint and I'm already thinking about this and I'm thinking about that. Well, once you start the process, if you have it in your mind, okay, say uh, you want a river or you want a lake or you want a sea, the ocean, okay? Just make sure you know that what you want in your mind and apply the colors that come to your mind. Now, it doesn't have to be like a something that you see on TV. It doesn't have to be... Uh, you know, something you see in books. It doesn't have to be none of that. All it has to be is you, you can use your own colors, you know. And the whole idea about it, and this is a therapy, uh, you know. It's creative, and at the same time, it's also uh, it keeps you on your feet. And it's relaxing because... Again, again, what you're doing here is you're chilling out. You're relaxing. This is your personal time. And by it being spontaneous, well, how? what is spontaneous, right? Well, spontaneous is, okay, you show up, you ha have an idea, okay, in your mind. Okay, well, I want a field. Uh, maybe I want an ocean, maybe I want a river, maybe I don't know what I want. So if you don't know what you want, start out with a sky. I mean, that's a good example. I was thinking, well, you know, how about, you know, yeah, I want a sky, but maybe uh, something a little different. Maybe uh, a red sky, um, you know, a pink sky. And that right away is, you know, well, okay. Or I could just make it a blue sky. In fact, I don't have to make it a, any color at all. I can leave it the color of the paper. Okay. And <coughs> excuse me. Okay. So, and you're looking at this, right? Now, you want your horizon line. And it doesn't have to be straight across the paper. No, you can put little hills, little mounds in there. Um, if you want to, you could put little tree lines or whatever. But just follow your intuition. 
follow yourself. And, you know, every time you do this, it's kind of like a journal. You know, like a journal of your mind. And when you, like when we think about things, um, our minds, you know, tell our limbs, our arms, our legs, our fingers, uh, basically what to do. And one interesting thing about painting is our subconscious mind, right? Our conscious, what we're thinking. But what we don't realize, and we, we can't realize, is what is going on in our mind while we're painting. Because we can't see it. We can't think about it because it's already been there. It's just in the back of our minds. That's a fact. So, um, being spontaneous is, uh, you, you know, you, you start out with an idea, a basic idea, and, you know, let it go. Let yourself go. So, here I've put in uh, some red. I was thinking, okay, well, like right off the bat, I was thinking, I wanted maybe... Uh, a cabin or something, a little house. And I was, you know, when I showed up, I was thinking, okay, well, if I, I could paint like a, you know, put little red dots, you know, for like a cabin or something. But as I was painting, I was like, well, maybe, how about red? You know, red kind of stands out a little bit, you know. Um, but, this is the process I was going through here. So now here I am. I'm putting in some darker colors. And I'm always throwing a light yellow. Um, a bright yellow. In this case, lemon yellow. Over, you know, like back and forth. I'm going back and forth to try to get, create some of the patches of maybe sunlight. Uh, patches of, you know, land, you know, like tracks, different tracks of land. And then I was looking at the back and I was like, well, I'll try this. So, I'm, you know, it's, it's all about uh, just enjoying yourself. Put yourself in the moment. Sometimes you might have to force yourself to do these things. Um, I call it being vulnerable to yourself. Well, in a way, it depends on, on who you are. Okay, for me, uh, putting these videos out, I'm putting out my vulnerability. I'm being vulnerable to you guys. Okay. And these are personal, but yet at the same time, um, they're off the top of my head, you know, everyone, we're all different. So we all have different ideas. Okay. Like I put a lot of, uh, dark green and mixed with some blue there in the foreground and middle ground. And then I came along and I put again some shades of uh, lemon yellow there you don't have to do that you can use different colors um, if you're if you want to do this kind of scene um, now as far as uh, the background there goes I'm still kind of like hmm and I was thinking about it and I'm not like when I'm painting, I'm not really, the thoughts are going through my mind so fast that I'm not, the thoughts are too fast for me to control. Um, so, and that's what I was getting at, the mind, 
uh, your conscious, your subconscious mind working along with the colors and working along with your hands and the colors of paint you're using. The best therapy is to let it happen. That's what I did in this video. I just let it happen. Okay? Um, I ain't worried about people criticizing the video. And you shouldn't worry about if it comes out good. If your painting comes out good or not. It's all about making, getting out and painting and making those accomplishments. And the more you do it, the more you learn about yourself. And the more you're relieving uh, your inner stress, your, you know, your creative parts of you. Everything is coming out of you when you are making these paintings of your own. Uh, even when you are, uh, if you do try to uh, paint someone else's painting, you're going to see you're going to notice that there's parts of this painting that I might want to add something to. And that's because that's part of the creative process. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. So, yeah, I scraped it and I'm because I'm looking for, okay, like the hilly side. I, I'm basically like drawing with the card there. Now... Again, this is, you know, a really good idea for anxiety and depression. Just, you know, in personal time. And please try this. I mean, get out and, and do something for yourself. And you're good. You are good. You know, you got to remember that, uh, you know, People with the biggest smiles on their faces are not exactly the happiest people in the world. And a lot of people don't talk about their problems. So one way of uh, dealing with stress in everyday life is by painting. <laughs>